Before I start this video, I want to quickly say I'm about to go buy some books. In the UK, it's Independent Bookshop Week, so I'm going on a bookshop crawl. This year's theme is Give a Book. So I want to give a book or two to you guys. Leave me in the comments down below a short description of the kind of book you're in the mood for at the moment. Is it fantasy? Is it YA? Is it something that will make you cry? Do you want something like Author X because you really loved them? Leave it. I'm going to see what I can find shopping. Now back to today's review. Is this the story of Mary Wilcox or is this the story of Princess Carib? I didn't mean to read this. I read this by accident. I mean, a friend did recommend it to me, but I'm not the biggest historical fiction reader. I mean, yes, historical fiction, but as long as it's set in a faux medieval Europe and has dragons and mages, but real historical fiction? Hmm. That's the thing that's really astounding about this book. It's based on an actual honest-to-god person who lived in 1819. A woman who pretended and dressed up and actually convinced a lot of people that she was a princess from exotic foreign climes. So our story follows a girl called Mary as she shrugs off that name, as she decides to be someone else. She's done with her old life. As far as she is concerned, from now on, she is the Princess Caribou. And she is so convincing in her performance that she manages to persuade an aristocratic family to take her in, to have her as their noble guest. That she manages to persuade academics that her language is real, that her signs are real, that her religious rituals are real. But there is one person who she doesn't manage to persuade, who sees through her, but decides to go along with it. Captain Palmer has sailed on ships and travelled around the world. He, if anyone, should know if she's telling the truth. Although it turns out the drunkard's stories of adventure might be as false as her own. Still, he discovers her secret, and although he goes along with it, it's on his terms, and it might cost Mary caribou a lot. The problem is Mary never meant to cause a huge amount of pain in pretending to be this other person, in becoming this other person. She just didn't want to be herself anymore. She doesn't want to humiliate and upset the kind Mrs. Worrell who took her in, who really wanted to believe her stories. She doesn't want to push away Cassandra, her daughter, who she's made a strange sort of friendship with. And she's no idea what she wants to do about Fred. Fred is this family's son their firstborn, ready to inherit everything. And he's a wild child. The moment Mary meets him, she knows that he's used to having everything, everything he wants. And she's determined to give him a taste of his own medicine, to make him fall in love, utterly and irrevocably, with this fake princess she's pretending to be. She'll spurn him and spite him and reject him like he's done to hundreds of girls before. But as Mary continues in this double life, becoming more and more entrenched in her own lives and the plotting of others, she realises her feelings towards Fred aren't as unfriendly as they might have started. She realises she might have just made things a hell of a lot more complicated for herself. The crux of this book is Katherine Johnson looking into the kind of person who would pretend to be someone else, pretend to be someone so outrageous and other. And she does a really good job of portraying that kind of person. Mary has had the hardest life you can possibly think of. She's been abused, she's been pushed away, and she has lost the things most important to her. So much so that she just can't be who she used to anymore. Catherine makes this character really, really likeable. Her choice is understandable, even if I'd never have the gall to go through anything, anything like that at all. You want her to succeed. You love her story making in herself, in her clothing, in her actions and her fake language. She's not the only character I really found interesting in this. Fred and Cassandra, both the two Worrell children, I really felt for them, despite their huge, huge amounts of flaws. I mean, they're outrageous in a way. The first scene in which you see Fred, he's in a seedy London bar, literally surrounded by naked prostitutes being held up on platters, and he can sneeringly take his pick because he is so privileged, because he is white and the richest of the rich. Cassandra, although you love her, although you feel for her, she is so fickle and, again, so privileged from such a rich, spoiled background. I should warn that this book doesn't shy away from sexual content, through what happened to Mary in her past, through Fred's levacious lifestyle, you see a lot. Ultimately though I have to love this book for its stranger than fiction packaging. Everything Mary did as she was Princess Caribou, I was sitting there so nervous going, you're about to be caught, you're about to be caught any minute now. Her lies were so audacious, her acting was so out there and yet this actually happened, someone did this. It's an interesting other for me to read considering most of the books I've read set in this time period would have been written by Austen, so, you know, less fake pirates and sexual assault. Slightly. 
But it's an adventure. It's exploring gender and race. And I really loved it. I would highly recommend. I'll finish by saying that this is actually the first post in a seven day blog tour for this book. There'll be lots of interesting things there, some interviews with the author, some other reviews, and a lot of my favourite blogs are being featured. So I'll leave links down below. Go check them all out. Other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>